Hi guys, welcome to the security identity and compliance section. So as you can imagine, mostly this falls under the security in domain two here, but also security is something you need to understand for every service you deploy on AWS. So it definitely falls into technology as well, where we need to understand how to secure our resources. So here we are, let's click on start. And the first question asks, which AWS service provides on-demand downloads of AWS security and compliance reports? So there's a service which does allow you to do this. Now, that, this means that you're looking at the security and compliance of AWS, not of yourself, not of your own resources. So what service allows you to do that? The first answer option here is AWS Directory Service. Now, this is basically a managed Microsoft Active Directory service. So it's not about security and compliance. It's more about sort of identity and access management. We then got AWS Artifact. Well, I like this answer because Artifact is a service that you can use to find out information about the security and compliance of AWS and you can generate reports and download those reports. So Artifact looks like a good option. So let's check out the last couple of answers to make sure we can eliminate them. We've got AWS Trusted Advisor. We covered this quite a bit in the last section. Now remember, Trusted Advisor is about um, giving you guidance on best practices. And it does relate to security, but it's not security and compliance reports. And then you've got Inspector, which is assessing vulnerabilities associated with your EC2 resources or other AWS resources. So Inspector is not the answer. I think Artifacts is definitely the best option here. So let's click on Check. And that is the correct answer. And as it states here in the explanation, it's the go-to central resource for compliance related information. So let's head over to a slide just to get a bit more data. So Artifact is a resource you can use for generating compliance related information. It gives you on-demand access to AWS's own security and compliance reports and some online agreements. And this might include things like security organization control reports, PCI, so the payment card industry reports, and other similar kind of reports and accreditations. So if you see any of that terminology, you'll know that Artifact is the place to go to get it. Question two asks, a company needs protection from distributed denial of service attacks on its website and assistance from AWS experts during such events. Which managed service will meet these requirements? So you remember we've talked about DDoS a few times in the course so far. So DDoS is where somebody tries to maliciously bring down your application basically by sending a lot of data to it. It's a bit more complex than that, but essentially you're trying to you know, bombard an application to bring it down. So what service can stop that? So you need something to mitigate it and you need help in this case from AWS as well. So the first option there looks really good to me because You'll remember from previous discussions, AWS Shield is a service that mitigates DDoS attacks. Now, there's a couple of versions, and Shield Advanced is the one that you can use to get assistance from AWS as well. So it gives you more features. It's, um, it's more expensive, so the standard is free, but the advanced you have to pay for. It's about $3,000 a month, I believe. So let's check the other ones. Firewall Manager. Well, that's what you can use to manage things like Shield and WAF, the Web Application Firewall. And Web Application Firewall is what you can use to try and mitigate sort of um, attacks that come, malicious attacks that come to your web application. Uh, it's not so much for DDoS. And Guard Duty is a tool that actually uses machine learning to be able to sort of protect your resources and monitor them and sort of let you know what's going on. So Guard Duty is not a DDoS prevention service. So I'm just gonna check on this one. And that is the correct answer. And it's useful just to head over to this getting started with AWS Shield link here on the AWS website. So this gives you a bit of information and you can compare the difference between AWS Shield Standard and AWS Shield Advanced. And it kind of breaks that down for you here. So you can see you do get quite a few more features with the advanced version, and then you have to pay for that one, whereas you, I think most of the features here on the left are for the standard edition are actually included for you for free. The next question asks, which of the following must be used together to gain programmatic access to an AWS account? So remember, there's a few ways that you can log into an AWS account. 
You can log in using your username and password to the management console. You can also sort of gain programmatic access and that way you have to authenticate differently. You can't use a username and password. So in that case, you use what's called an access key ID and with that should be a secret access key. So you can see those two here. We've got the access key ID and the secret access key. Now, a primary key is incorrect terminology. That's more associated with something like a, a NoSQL database like DynamoDB. So that's not for authentication. You can't use a user ID, so your username can't be used. And there's no such thing as a secondary key. So these two answers look like the best to me. So those are correct. And if you look down here in the explanation, you can see an example of what an access key looks like and also what the secret access key looks like. And this is you know, information that you wanna keep confidential because people can use that to actually access your account. And so here again is a sort of breakdown of what you can do with the different authentication methods. So remember that an access key is used for accessing the API, so that's programmatic access. You've got a username and a password, which you would use to access the management console. And lastly, you can actually use something called a signing certificate. That probably won't come up in your exam, but you can use a certificate for authenticating to some services.